Welcome to Education Matters on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Caroline Lee. Our topic for today is the He'i Coalition, Leadership in Public Education with my guest, Sherry Nakamura, Director of He'i Coalition, the Hui for Excellence in Education. Public education has faced serious challenges during this past decade alone. What one organization is doing to help us navigate those challenges? And in this light, we welcome Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Hi, thank you for having me today, Cal. So tell us about the Hague Coalition and how it got started and uh, what its role is in our community. Okay, so if you remember Furlough Fridays, um, that was a time when policymakers decided to furlough our schools for 17 days uh, in a year and this was in 2010, right? I believe it was 2010. Mm -hmm. So a lot of parents at that time didn't know how to react uh, well to that decision. And they wanted to, when the, after the decision was made, they tried very hard to become engaged by going to the Board of Education, going to the legislature, going to leadership at DOE to try to see if they could uh, change the decision. Um, but they didn't have much success because they didn't have the know-how. Uh, they didn't understand how everything was organized and how decisions were made. So, but it did spur up a lot of um, interest from the community, in particular with parents, to get involved. So the Learning Coalition, which is a nonprofit whose mission is to engage community with our public education system, went out to the community, some of these same parent and parent groups and said, what if we formed an organized group uh, so that you could lend your community voice uh, to policymakers and policy making decisions? And of course, at that time, the members all said, yes, we would like that. So the Learning Coalition sponsored a series of strategic planning meetings. We became organized. Uh, we decided on sort of a governance structure it was decided that there would be a director who would sort of facilitate uh, the community actions. And that's how He'e formed, and that was in 2010, right after the furloughs. Right. OK, so in the, the Learning Coalition, how long has that been in our community? I believe the Learning Coalition, as a nonprofit, has been in existence since 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are a nonprofit whose like I mentioned, mission is to engage the community in schools. And they fund uh, community organizations who are trying to partner with schools, um, as well as our group who is trying to provide a community voice for public education. Of course, I, I do remember Furlough Fridays very well. And just as a disclosure to our public, I used to serve on the Board of Education, and I was a member at that mm -hmm. period, that time. Um, but it did, the Furlough Fridays, and uh, if the public remembers, it really uh, created a huge outcry, not just in Hawaii, but nationwide, because at that time we ended up being the uh, state with the shortest school year in the country. Um, but as a result, even though the public, I guess, felt that they couldn't change the decision of, at that time, mm -hmm. the Board of Education, that they were able to pass through uh, support with the legislature and the governor a constitutional amendment. Right. right. And that ended up changing the, the way Board of Education members are selected. And that is, so as that opposed is correct. to being elected, uh, they have now been changed to an appointed board. That's right. Currently, the governor uh, appoints the board members. And I think the idea is now the accountability rests with the governor. Mm -hmm. So if uh, the board does a good job, it's a reflection of the governor. And if they don't do a good job, it's also a reflection of the governor. So there's a lot of um, pressure on the governor uh, to select the board members that he feels are going to be best for our school system. Right. So there's so many relationships we can talk about. Hey, e with the board, with the state legislature, right. and with our community. So let's talk a little bit about the community and, and your membership in the Hei Coalition. So our members, uh, of course, because it was sort of spurred by the furloughs, we have a number of uh, parent groups that are involved. Uh, in particular, the um, Hawaii State, it's the P 
PTSA Hawaii is what they're called, the Parent Teacher Student Association. They're a statewide parent organization. They are uh, active voting members of our coalition. So is, is that a PTA? Yeah, it's the PTA, but it's the state statewide. PTA, which is a subchapter of the national PTA. I see. So they're involved, as well as Parents for Public School Hawaii, and the founders of that organization, it's now a nonprofit, but the founders were the ones that sat in at the governor's office. Uh, remember when the furloughs happened, they were in protest and sat in at the governor's office wanting to have the governor uh, hear their voices. I remember very yes. well. Yes. It's one of those uh, now working with the Hei Coalition? Well, the organization, Parents for Public School Hawaii, uh -huh. is now a member a voting oh. member of the coalition. So uh, just a little bit about how our membership works. How many members do you have? Well, we have, if we count our members and participants, it's over 40. Mm -hmm. However, we have a differentiation between voting membership and non-voting membership. So really, it's an organizational membership. It's organizations like Parents for Public School Hawaii who send the representative to our monthly meetings. Um, and they are a voting member, so that, what that means is if we talk about policy that we want to support, for example, we have to have a 75% consensus or more of the voting members for He'e to endorse something. So PPS Hawaii is a voting member as well as the Hawaii State PTSA, they are a voting member. So they are parent groups, but we also have uh, members who are nonprofits that deal with specific types of families. So Parents and Children Together works with the Pacific Islander community, families. We have In Peace, uh, which works with Native Hawaiian families. So um, we also have other coalitions like uh, the Hawaii After School Alliance. They are an alliance of um, after school providers that work with our students and families. I think we have a list of some of them that we can just scroll through them. Not that um, so why don't you continue to talk sure. about it? Sure. So, so we have parent groups, we have other coalitions, we have community organizations that deal with families. We even have a couple of uh, complex areas that have their own sort of community coalitions that are, are members of HEA. So it's a really diverse groups. We even have some, a teacher group, Teach for America, has become a, um, a recent voting member as well as some other advocacy groups like the Native Hawaiian Education Council and the Hawaii Appleseed Center. They are advocacy groups that are also a part of He'e. So what we really want to do, though, is provide that voice, uh, community voice, this diverse uh, group of voices to policymakers so that they can hear the community's perspective on public education, uh, we're just one of the stakeholders, along with teachers and administrators and students. But the community really does want to be involved. And I think the example was when Furlough Fridays happened, um, I think parents wanted to have a say in the decision making and weren't able to because they weren't organized. So there was no voice, community voice at that time. There was no mechanism. Community. Right. Yeah, there I wasn't see. a mechanism of how to provide that voice. So we're trying to be the medium by which community members can participate and come together uh, to agree on a community consensus. Because not everybody's going to agree. Right. right. Yeah. So in the past then seven years that you've been mm -hmm. in existence, maybe can you give us some ideas of some of the policy issues that you have supported? And, sure. Uh, sure. So the Board of Education is the policy-making entity for a public school system. Uh, that's what they're tasked to do. So we are um, at the board meetings regularly. You attend all board meetings. I attend the board me meetings and I report back to our membership on uh, the important, ports, uh, important points that the board uh, discusses. Um, and we've commented on a number of policies, for example, We've supported a family school partnership policy whereby we would like the department to really ha have as a priority engaging with parents and families. So right now that's not a priority? Uh, it is. It's part of their strategic plan. Um, but the board, 
the department has so many things on their plate. We just want to keep reminding them that you know, families need to be considered. And so it's a priority, but I think it's just a friendly reminder that the community is watching, watching and wanting to see this priority be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. um, we've also commented on the strategic plan. The board has embarked on two um, strategic plans uh, in the past seven years, and we've been active in going through the plan, trying to decide where we feel the community wants to weigh in. And where are those, what are those areas? Well, the first time it was family, family partnerships, uh, pa family and parent partnerships, as well as community partnerships. On this uh, past strategic plan, we've also reiterated that priority, but we've also uh, taken a look at looking at equity in education because we've had a persistent um, achievement gap between the high need students and the non-high need students. And I think that's the theme of the whole plan, really, that the board and the department and us as community advocates want to change that persistent achievement gap and narrow it. So, and so equity we need in to, education. Yeah, that has been sort of a new theme that's been emerging, and we've been communicating that to the board. Uh, on the legislative side, because the legislature makes uh, laws uh, regarding public education, we also actively participate, and we've supported legislation on early education, for example, um, as well as early college. So these are things that our members are uh, think feel strongly about that uh, you know, things like early college and early education. Early are college. Now, what is early college? So, what's happened in the department recently, and actually, this is an initiative that's been led by Hawaii P20, um, and some tell of us the, our, tell us a little about Hawaii P20. So, Hawaii P20 is a coalition of stakeholders that is trying to look at our state education system from. Uh, pre-kindergarten all the way up to college continuum. Right. For actually, it's uh, two years of college, right? Two years of college, but I think they would also say that they want to include four years of college as well. So it's, but it's looking at the system as a P20 sort of continuum or, or, or path right. for students. And so we are lucky in the state that we have one state, one district right. for K-12. We have one university system and that we have the potential to align. Right. With the early education piece, I think the goal is to have that part of a child's progress also be aligned with this K-12 to, to, to college. So, right. um, but P-20 has been looking at how to strengthen the pipeline from, um, is in particular, from high school to college. And so they've come up with a way to actually have high school students earn um, college, college credits. Credit. And the place where it's been quite successful is, uh, I think you've, maybe people might have heard of, of Waipahu High School, where they've actually brought college teachers to the school to teach classes where a student can get a credit in high school as well as college. Great. Okay, well on that note we're going to take a short break, sure. Sherry, and we'll be right back to okay. continue our talk on the Hei Coalition. Hi everyone, Ted Rolson here, host of our Think Tech show Where the Drone Leads, and a lot of you of course have been setting your clocks at uh, uh, 4 o'clock on Friday so that you can make sure you see our show. It's now changed. It's now going to be at noon on Thursdays. Noon on Thursdays, new standard time for where the drone leads. And where the drone leads is to systems like this, capabilities that we're using here in Hawaii these days. And we need you to pay attention to this, be part of it. So see you at noon on Thursdays. You want to talk about some socially sensitive issues relevant to women? Listen to these guys. Well, I think it's important in Judaism that we don't take the Bible literally we take it seriously. Okay. I agree, and the, really the key to understanding Christianity is compassion. If you're compassionate towards other people, you are living a Christian life, and that relates also to dealing with women and men and women issues as well. Mm. Are women and men equal? They're equal. Who's Why better? Be Who's better? <laughs> Depends tune on in, what. Tune in. 
Welcome back. This is Carol Monley with my guest Sherry Nakamura from the Hey Coalition. We're talking about um, this wonderful and important community group that has been um, started in 2010. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about some of the policy issues that the Hey Coalition has supported over the past few years. Right. So we, start, we talked about P20, mm -hmm. and uh, we also talked about the equity, equity in education. That's right. So there are other policies that we've supported at the legislature, for example. Um, the one that's sort of come to light uh, in this, in this uh, time right now is uh, we, there was a bill a few years ago to raise the cap of the superintendent's salary. Mm -hmm. um, we were at the lowest uh, salary for our district. I mean, if you compare similar districts, we were at the bottom. So, in the country. In the country, yes, in the country. So uh, there was a bill uh, to change that, to raise the cap um, that went to the legislature. And it was the Board of Education that actually wanted to have this cap uh, rise, increase, increase mm -hmm. because the board is tasks with, tasked with um, hiring the superintendent. And so they felt that in order to attract uh, candidates, good candidates, they would have to um, increase the cap because if we were at the bottom, it didn't send across a very positive message. So um, we as a coalition actually helped, um, we commented to support that because our members felt that that was important, that if we were to find a new superintendent, we would have to have a salary that would be attractive enough to get quality candidates. From all over the country. From all over the country, not just Hawaii. And so we think that, I, I can't, the, the, the bill did pass and the legislature did uh, approve to raise the cap. And we think that that's just, and we were part of the supporters. Uh, I don't think we were the only reason, but I do think that it was helpful to have a community group uh, support that uh, bill and that idea. Um, and hopefully it, might have made a difference to the legislature to see that there was broad support for something like this. Right. I know that the uh, old salary cap had been in place for many, many years. Many, many years. And had yeah. been, there had been many attempts to uh, introduce bills to increase the cap. So congratulations on finally getting that Yeah. Done. So I, we, we feel proud that we could participate in that. And it is coming to light now because of this uh, current, super, search. current search for superintendent. Yes. Right. So what are you working on this session at the legislature? Well, coming back to equity in education, uh, so actually HEA has joined forces with other advocates in the community, uh, in particular advocates for students um, that have historically struggled in our system. Um, so children with disabilities, for example, or children uh, of certain um, from immigrant countries where English isn't the first language or the language of instruction isn't the home language. Um, for Native Hawaiian students, um, as well as students in poverty. So, so do each one of these groups have their own organizations? Uh, some of them do, yes. Um, they're advocating, traditionally they have advocated for their own particular group. But this year uh, we have come together as sort of a broader coalition, broader than Hei. Um, but I've been participating, our coalition has been participating uh, to look at this theme of equity in education where we would like to have struggling, uh, historically struggling students uh, be lifted up. And a lot of it requires additional supports um, at the school level and in the school system. So what we did this year, um, and it's still going on because the legislative session is going on, um, we advocated to the legislature to include some of these supports in the DOE budget. Um, so, so there's a, the, is, there's not a separate bill then regarding it. It's just part of the budget. Yes. Process. So the way the budget process works is the Department of Education and the Board of Education submits a request to the governor, and then the governor makes adjustments, and that executive budget goes to the legislature and then the legislature negotiates and comes up with the final state budget. And I think that's what they're doing right at this moment. Right at this moment. Right. So we wanted How to... How does it look? Well, it, I think the state budget 
I, I think people are worried about the state budget because while we have, you know, uh, tourist numbers that are very high and uh, economy is, is doing well uh, with low unemployment, um, the Council on Revenues has um, reported that the projections they, that they had hoped for are probably not going to be met. And furthermore, the tax department is saying that tax collections aren't as high as they expected. So all of a sudden, where we thought we might have some windfall, um, there's some, uh, I think people are, I think the legislature is trying to be more conservative now. And the governor, the governor and the legislature are being conservative and they're sort of scaling back some of the hopes that they had wanted for the state budget. So all departments, not just the Department of Education, are looking at um, not getting all of their uh, Request. requests fulfilled. Um, what was the request on behalf of equity and education? Well, what we took a look at were specific line items that the department requested regarding supports for struggling students. So whether it was for the homeless liaison position or positions for um, English language learner specialists or some of the special education supports, uh, we advocated to have these supports be in the budget. And so right now they're not, in prior years this was not part of the DOE No, budget. I think s some of it was part of it. There's a base budget, but usually the requests are on top of what the DOE base budget is. Um, so, but because of the strategic plan and this emphasis on equity and education and lifting up these struggling students, there was a, a request from the department and the board to pay attention to some of these extra supports. And what and we right did now? as, well, it's all up to the legislature right now. But what we did as community advocates for equity and education, we did advocate to our legislators to say we feel that this is really important for um, our students, that these supports are maintained. And um, we'll see what happens. I think the budget's going to be, I know that the House and the Senate have already gone through. And the next step is to have the specific details be um, uh, communicated to the public. So you don't know if there's, those line items are still in the budget? Not yet. OK. But we're hopeful. You're hopeful? <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay. we're hopeful. So uh, assuming, what is uh, the amount for, the, for this particular well, um, if you if you um, if you total up all of these line items that we were looking at, I would say it's about five million dollars. Five million dollars for statewide support for, for statewide support for some of these uh, so, some of these line items. It's I think the it, it's only a part of what the department was asking for. I mean, they're asking for so many other things regarding facilities or operations or so we were as a community group or community advocate or community stakeholder group, we were just focusing on the supports for struggling students just to keep it narrow and focused. I mean, of course, we would like many other things as well, but for the purposes of trying to uh, persuade the legislators who have to look at the myriad of priorities, right? right? We were trying to keep focus on, well, this group as a broad coalition for equity, this is what we really like you to consider because we as advocates know how hard it is for our our kids in our system. Right. So uh, when you uh, when you go down to the legislature, do you testify or do you bring parents with you or students with you? So um, it depends. A lot of the times it's me representing a coalition, but on occasion uh, there are members who come and give me support, or they actually come and testify on behalf of their own edu uh, own organization, right. which we welcome as well. Because right. I think we want to build the capacity of our members to lend their own voices as, too. I mean, they can right. participate as the coalition, as mm -hmm. part of the coalition. But if they feel strongly about a view, we encourage them to go to the legislatures themselves and represent their own organizations and advocate on what they feel strongly about. And so this has happened, and I, and I think 
hopefully I'm, I've been a good model for them that they can, and they, and they actually have. They've, they, sometimes they'll call me and say, you know, we're not sure about the process. Can you give me some advice on how to do this or that? And I'm happy to lend that capacity to them because we want to encourage that. We want to encourage more um, participation. community participation, yes. So now what happens after the session, legislative session is over, and uh, let's say there is this gap in mm -hmm. the funding. Mm -hmm. What will the Haiti Coalition do during the interim before the next legislative session to right. address the problem? Well, let's say that the legislature doesn't end up funding, yes. So I think we would continue to work with the department and the board to advocate on the next time they do a budget request. Which is two years. I think they do a supplemental. I see, right. Yeah, they do a supplemental. So we're still going to be present, and we're still going to advocate on the priorities that we feel are best for our kids. Uh, I think it's consistency is very important. So we'll continue, we'll continue to stress how important these supports are. And if it doesn't happen this time, hopefully it will happen the next time. And perhaps there will be a, a better environment uh, in, in, our, in our budget and forecast. On the other hand, it could be that it's not a, it's, it, it's not a better environment. Perhaps it's a worse environment. That's okay. We're still going to keep we're still going to keep advocating on behalf of our students and get that message out that you know we we feel that these supports are priorities. And it doesn't just have to be on these line item budgets. It could be on how the DOE is implementing things, um, what we hear from the field. So I think we just want to be included in the conversation. Right. Absolutely. Well, we have one more slide to show, uh, Zuri, and it is how to get a hold of the Hey Coalition. Right. It includes its website. And oh, okay, there we go. There is the website, www.heicoalition.org. That's the Hei Coalition, Who We for Excellence in Education. So, with a few more seconds left, Sherry, you can look right into camera two and tell our audience a little bit more about either how they can get involved or how they can find out more information and how the public can be part of this. Okay. Important. Well, please uh, visit our website. Uh, there's contact information there. If you'd like to find out more, uh, please feel free to contact me uh, through email. And uh, we would love to have more participants. Uh, we have monthly meetings, um, and we welcome all uh, participants. And um, let us know how we can help you get involved. Thank you. Well, thank you, Sherry Nakamura, for telling us more about the Hei Coalition, the Hui for Excellence in Education, and its important work in Hawaii. Remember to check its website. If you want to see this show again, go to thinktechhawaii.com or youtube.com slash thinktechhawaii, where there will be a link to this and more other, and other shows just like this. So I'm your host, Carol Mon Lee, and thank you for watching. Aloha. <laughs>